Today we're going to be doing um, the Excel module two. So whichever week your Excel is in, we're going to go to that week. We're going to go to Excel two, and we're going to do the end of module project one. Here we have our assignment. We we'll hit start. I'm going to download the instructions. I'm also going to download the starter file. So right down here, my instructions and my starter file. My instructions opened up on my other monitor over here. And here is my Excel document. I need to enable editing. Make sure that my name is here in the document. First thing I need to do is change the name. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, Browse. I'm going to go to my desktop. I have an Excel folder for fall 2020. Might be a different semester that you're looking at this, but the assignment's the same. And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to change this one and make it a two. That's all you have to do is change that one and make it a two. Hit save. And I'm ready to get going. So in the first step, um, Brad Kaufman, the Senior Director of Projects for Rivera Engineering in Miami, Florida, has started to create an Excel workbook to track estimated and actual hours and billing amounts for each project. He wants us to format the workbook to make the information clearer and easier to interpret. So the first step that we're going to do to make these changes is we're going to go to the, the Employees for Projects Worksheet. So right down here, I'm going to open up, click this tab, and I'm going to change the worksheet theme to Office. So I'm going to come up here and go to Page Layout. Over here on the right is my themes. This is just going to change the way it looks. And I'm going to change office. See, instead of orange, it's now blue. Then in cell A1, so I've got column A, row 1. So right here, you see it's already been merged and centered. Then A1, we want to decrease the font size to 18 point and change the fill color to blue accent one lighter 80%. So the first thing I'm going to do is come back up to the home tab. I'm going to change this font size to 18. And then I'm going to add a fill color. So right here I've got my little icon with the paint can. That's the fill option. And we're going to make it blue accent one lighter 80%. We've got the fill color. That was step two. Step three, we want to center the values in the range B3 through B9. So the first thing we have to do is select that range. So I'm going to put my cursor in B3. So here's B3, and I'm going to drag down to B9. I'm going to come up here on my Alignment tab and Center. Now I want to add outside borders to the range A1 through C9. So I'm going to select A1. I'm going to go all the way down to C9, select that entire range. And I want to add outside borders. So here in the font grouping, we have our borders option. So I can click on this 
drop down arrow and I've got all these different borders I can choose from or you can actually come down here for more borders and create what you want. We just want the outside borders. So right here is outside borders. I'm going to select that. It will put a border around our project, around that range. We want to change the color of the employee, the color of the employees per projects worksheet tab to blue accent one. So down here on our tab, move your cursor right in front of it. We can right click on it and we can come up here and it says tab color and we're going to change this tab color to blue accent one. And all it does is just change the way it looks on our screen. Number six, go to the project tracking worksheet. So it's very important when you're working in Excel that you make sure you're on the correct worksheet tab. So we're going to go to the project tab tracking worksheet. And B2, so we've got B2. We're going to change the date format to short date and resize the column to its best fit. So up here we have our date. We can click on this down arrow tab. One of our options is a short date. So we're going to select that. And then we want to do best fit. So we can come up here in between B and C and we can double click. It's going to automatically resize that column for us. Number seven, display the values in the range D4 to D13 with one decimal place. So first we need to select D4 to D13. And what we're going to do is make it add one decimal place. So up here on our number grouping in our home tab, these two options right here, one decreases the decimal and one increases the decimal. We want to increase it one, so we're just going to click on that option one time. It increases every time you click, so make sure you only click that one time. Number eight, in F4, insert a formula without a function that multiplies Aubrey Irwin's estimated hours. So first we're going to select F4, and we want to put in a formula. So to do that, we are going to hit the equal key. And so now we're going to create a formula that multiplies D4, his estimated hours. So we're going to select that, D4 times multiplies as times, which is the asterisk, shift eight, is pay rate. So we're just going to select E4. So our formula looks equals D4 times E4, and then we're going to hit, I'm just going to hit this check mark up here. You can either hit the check mark or the enter key. Hit the check mark. The difference is if you hit this check mark, your active cell stays the same. When you hit the enter key, your active cell moves down one. Now we're going to copy this formula down to F13. So I'm going to move my insert my mouse until it's over this fill handle here, the little skinny plus sign, and then drag down and let go. Okay, we're ready for step nine. We're going to apply the currency number format to the range F4 to F13 using the dollar sign and adding two decimal places, which is what the currency number format will do. So we're going to first select the range F4 to F13. We're going to go F4 to F13, and we want to add the currency range. So right up here in our numbers, we've got this dollar sign 
that's the accounting number format. We want the currency. So I'm going to come up here to the general tab, click on this little arrow right here, and I'm going to come down. The third one is currency, and it's going to put our dollar sign, our hundred separator, and our two decimal points. We want to display the values in range K4 to K13 as percentages. So the first thing we have to do is go to K4 and drag down to K13. And we want to make that a percentage with no decimal places. So right up here, we've got our percentage and the number section of the Home tab. I'm going to click on the percent, and it wants us to make sure there's no decimal places. We don't have any. If you have decimal places, remember you got your increase and decrease decimals right up here on your tab. And now we want to use conditional formatting to make some of our information stand out. So right here we have conditional formatting. We want to use the highlight cell rules. We want to format cells containing a value greater than 100%. So we're going to go greater than, or greater than 10%, sorry. We want 10% here, and we want with a light red fill with dark red text. So it's that one that's right here. Click OK. So it just highlights those that have a percentage over 10%. And then in H4 to H13, so we're going to add, select that range, we want to add conditional formatting with data bars. So we've got our conditional formatting here. We're going to come down here to data bars. And we want the gradient fill blue option. So here's gradient fill blue. And that just gives us a vis visual representation of the actual billing in a month. Then on number 12, in G14, so we're going to go G14. We want to use a formula to give us the average of the actual hours worked. So we're going to make sure our active cell is G14. We're going to come up here to this auto sum, and one of our options is average. And you can see right away, you get this little marching ant order around G4 to G13. Now it's important that you pay attention to what it's around because that's what it's going to figure the average of. That's what we want. So I'm going to click on the check mark or you can hit the enter key. Both will work. Then in G15, we want the minimum of the actual hours worked. So if I select G15 as my active cell, if I come back up here to the auto sum, you can see I've got a minimum and maximum, and we want the minimum actual hours. And this is where you really need to pay attention, because by default, Excel thinks that you want to add the cell right next to the cell that's active, which is incorrect, because that's G14. We need this to say G13, so I'm just going to backspace, and I'm just going to put that range in here. G4 semicolon G13. You can see now my bars are around the correct range. And I can hit on my check mark or the equal key. And now we want maximum hours. So back up, make G16 the active cell. Come back up here to auto sum. Choose maximum. And you can see our range is wrong again because it's G14 to G4 to G15. And at this time, instead of typing it in, I can just come up here and go G4 and drag down to G13. 
so I have my correct range. So there's a couple of different ways you can do it. So there's my maximum number of hours. So the instructions now tell us that our workbook should be similar to the final workbook, um, the pictures and your instructions. We're going to save this. So I'm going to click upon the save icon. I'm going to close this file and I'm ready to go back here to Blackboard and submit it. So I'm going to click on continue. I'm going to upload. I'm going to find that file I just created. I put it on my desktop in my Excel folder. I'm going to find that file. I'm looking for the EOM2-1, EOM2-1 right here. Open. I got my green check mark, so I've got the right file submitted. I'm going to submit. And now I'm going to view report. And I received 100 out of 100. If your score is less than that and you want to see where what you did wrong. You're just going to look through here for the ones that are red and then read through what it tells you to do. Pay attention to the details. Make your changes, save your file, resubmit it for your higher grade. Have a great day.